Hello NASCAR fans, I'm Chris Terrell, I'm here for RotoPros.com to bring you my weekly daily fantasy NASCAR post-qualifying picks video. Before getting into the picks, if you're not a RotoPros member yet, make sure to go over to RotoPros.com, click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner, and this week using promo code NASCAR you can get 50% off of a weekly monthly subscription, which gives you access to all of our premium content. We cover NFL, NHL, NBA, NASCAR, PGA, MLB starting in two weeks. We cover soccer. Pretty much if there's a DFS sport out there played on DraftKings and FanDuel, we can cover it. It also gives you access to our members-only community chat. We've got a bu bunch of different channels set up here for all the different sports. For NASCAR, I've put in a couple of the top news people in the sport who follow along track to track. They're there every single week. They're in the pits. They're in the garages. They're talking to drivers. They're talking to engineers. They're talking to crew chiefs. Best way to get the most information all in one spot here in our Rotor Pros community chat. Sign up today, you're not going to be disappointed. With that, let's jump into this week's picks. This week, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series heads to Richmond International Raceway for the Toyota Owners 400 on Saturday night. We got a night race, so everything happened on Friday. It's a little bit things are running a little bit different this week, so we had practice one uh, Friday morning, and then the second practice was actually rained out, and then qualifying was this afternoon as well. Um, with this being an impound race, meaning the inspection isn't going to happen until tomorrow, things could definitely change when come the qualifying order. So keep that in mind um, when watching this video and constructing your lineups maybe tonight that that uh, inspection is going to be very important tomorrow as drivers who fail will lose their qualifying time, go to the back, but will get that new um, start in position for fantasy. Um, just the way it works with the inspection race or with these uh, lockup races like this. So just pay attention to that. I'm going to be updating tomorrow in the DFSR chat room as well as the Rotor Pros community chat to keep everyone up to date as well as on Twitter. So just stay tuned and just keep that in mind when I'm going through my picks today. So the track's a .75 mile short track. Um, it is flat as well, so we can look at results from Martinsville. We can look at results from Phoenix as well. It falls right in between those two in distance. Um, it's flat like those two races. Um, so those are some of the things we can look at this week. And with a shortened race or shortened practice times this week, you know, it kind of throws things in the air. It's kind of going to be more of a GPP, but there are some definitely some place differentials um, that you're going to want to lock into cash here this week. So let's just jump into a few picks here. Um, I'm going to be using a couple sites for reference here. Um, I use these for bringing in the stats into my cheat sheet, and I use them every single week. I just want to give a shout-out to them. DriverAverages.com I'm going to be using for track history, and then Racing Reference right here. Um, we're going to look at some current form. So let's just do that right off the bat. Coming into this race, Kyle Busch leads the series. He's got three wins on the season coming off his win at Bristol. He's got eight top tens in eight races this year. He's actually got ten straight top tens going back to Phoenix. He also leads the series with six top five finishes. Denny Hamlin's right behind him with two wins, uh, five top fives and seven top tens. And then the only other team in NASCAR right now that has wins is Team Penske. Joey Logano's got one. Brad Kozlowski's got two. As you can see, Kurt Busch and Kevin Harvick have been very consistent so far this year, uh, right at 9.2 and 8.6 average finish over the eight races so far this year. Both have three top fives and six top tens, but neither have, run, have hit victory lane yet this year. Martin Trex Jr. is up there as well, so um, JGR really makes a strong showing in the top six, top ten, especially here in the Cup Series early in the season. He's only got two top fives, but he's got five top tens and 11.5 average finish, and then Brad Kozlowski right there with 11.5 as well. Chase Elliott, Clint Boyer, and Eric Almirola shape up the top ten there. And then just kind of looking at some of my picks, all the data is loaded. Um, I haven't totally finalized this model yet. I might tweak it a little bit here and there. Just, you know, just for, as you can see here down the qualifying and practice differential column, there is a lot of uh, negative double differential there. So we can definitely get some place differential. So at the top, Kyle Busch, as you can see, got very expensive, 13000 on DK, 15.3 on FanDuel. Definitely look at him as a core play this week. I mean, he was fastest in 10-lap averages in that one practice, top five in the one-lap speed, qualified fifth, so that speed carried over into qualifying, even with the change track conditions with uh, the rain that kind of came in there between. So Kevin Harvick is up there as well. He won the poll here this week. He was right behind Kyle Busch in 10-lap averages. Um, he was ninth in one lap average in that one practice. 
both have been good here. Kyle Busch won both races here last year. Kevin Harvick has been good here as well. Those two are going to be my core plays this week, and there is enough value, and we'll get into that here shortly, to you know have two drivers like that where you can go and create a lineup with Kyle Busch, um, a lineup that you're going to like, and then just go duplicate that lineup and replace Busch with Harvick, and with $700 savings, $1,300 on FanDuel, you can probably even upgrade one of the other drivers as well when you do that pivot, but I will have a lot of lamps constructed that way. For cash games, if you're running cash games this week, I don't run too many cash games, um, you know, with the variancy, variance in NASCAR, um, along with, you know, the new rules package this year, not a whole bunch of data behind it. But if you are playing cash games, Ryan Blaney has to be one of your top picks in this top tier this week at 11-1 on DraftKings and 11-2 on FanDuel, which is a, a really big bargain over there. He's starting 29th this week, um, didn't have a great qualifying run, but he was 11th in practice one, he was 5th in 10 lap averages. So it looks like he's probably got upside, you know, top five upside. I'd say his floor is probably going to be a top 15, and he's definitely top 10, top five upside there as well. So at uh, at that price, especially on FanDuel starting 29th, the place differential and that kind of upside, definitely looking at him despite his uh, track history being not so great. Moving down into the mid-tier, um, looking at some values, Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin stick out. Denny Hamlin's number one in the model right now. He's starting 18th, which is excellent place differential value for him. Um, he was second in first practice, sixth in 10 lap averages. He's been very good here as well. We'll just go check out Hamlin. Second in average finish over the last two years here. 16th in the fall, but before that he had top fives in four straight, top tens in six straight. So um, he's got a good track history here. He showed some speed. He's got place differential, and he's cheap in that second tier price in 8900 on DraftKings this week. A little more expensive on FanDuel. Probably going to be GBP only for me there. Well, I would, you know, go Ryan Blaney in all formats, but on DraftKings, uh, Denny Hamlin's definitely where I'm going to be going. Kyle Larson as well. He talked about really not knowing what they have with the car, so that's going to be kind of gives you a sign of what we're going to be looking for. Teams are going to be making a lot of adjustments early on in the race in the first, you know, through the first stage, um, whether there's going to be cautions or at the end of the first stage. There's going to be a lot of adjustments going on. We're not going to really know, I don't think, who the fastest car is for the race until, you know, late, mid-second stage into the early stages of the, you know, into stage three there. So, but I think uh, both these guys have an excellent shot at it. They were 1-2 in practice one. Um Larson, they were both top 10. Larson was 8th. Hamlin was 6th in 10 lap averages. So definitely like both those two with their price. I think you can combine them together and make a really nice balanced lineup starting uh, with those two drivers. Some GPP that I'm looking at. Um, Eric Jones, again, always going to be GPP for me on FanDuel. I don't think, you know, he's starting second, so that's only negative place differential for him. But a top five, a top ten on FanDuel where place differential may, and fast laps maybe aren't as important. Finishing position is a little more important there. Definitely look at him, and I think he could be a little bit lower owned this week. Eric Almirola, I really like his price in the mid-7K range on DraftKings starting 15th. I feel he's his floor is going to be a 15th, so I feel he's only, you know, barring a mechanical issue or, or things like that or in a crash, I think he's, you know, somewhere in between an 8th and a, and a 15th place car. So definitely like his price. At 7,700, which has come down. GPP, Daniel Suarez, he's number five in my model this week. He's starting ninth, which I don't really like, but he has shown top 10 speed. He's been good on short tracks. He's been good here on, he's been good on flat tracks. So definitely looking at Suarez, um, GPP play there. And then going down a bit, Alex Bowman stands out starting 17th. He was 15th in first practice, 17th in that 10 lap average. Um, but just going and looking at, his run here at Richmond, he was good last year, definitely 18th, so top 20s in both those races, 18th and 12th in his first year with Team Hendrick, which was really nice to see. He's only 7,100, 7,800 on Fandle, really like him over there, starting 17th, and he, he he's probably going to be, you know, somewhere between like a 13, his floor is going to be probably 15th to 18th somewhere in there. I think he's got upside to finish, you know, somewhere around 8th to 12th, somewhere in there as well. So definitely like Bowman, he's going to be on my radar this week. Going down into the value range, hard not to like Chris Buescher. Um, GPP only, of course, starting 11th. I never like some of these bottom tier drivers with not the top equipment starting close to that top 10. I just don't think they're going to finish there. But he did show top 5 speed in that first practice. So the punt in GPP definitely makes sense. For Busher, Ryan Priest stands out to me. Um, 
starting 23rd this week, showed top 15 speed in practice. And he was also just going to go quickly look at some Xfinity stuff here because this is his first first time here in a cup car. So we'll just go look at the last 10 Xfinity races on Richmond. We'll run that search. And then we'll just search Priest here real quick. 23rd, 26th, 18th. So nothing really great um, there, but he is showing some speed in that car. Definitely looking at him for a little bit of place differential this week. Even if he finishes 25th, though, loses a few points for that place differential, I think at his price it, it makes sense if he's going to be a top 25 car. Anywhere in that 20th to 25th range I would take from him. Ty Dillon starting 30th makes sense. He's minus 14th in the qualifying practice differential. Showed top 20 speeds, 11th and 10 lap averages in that first practice. So that's, that's promising for him as well. Um, we'll go look at uh, how he's done here as well lately. Give you a little look at the uh, course history or track history. Sorry, watching the Masters making the video here. It's 29th, 31st, 32nd. So top 30 car he's been here in the past. So he's starting 30th. So, I mean, at 6,100, 6,000 um, stars and scrubs, I think he can definitely go that way for GPP. And then David David Reagan stands out in my model. He's 13th right now, starting 22nd. Really, it comes down to that qualifying practice differential, which I'm probably going to end up changing here a bit because he was 5th in practice one. We don't really have that extra data. We don't know what teams were really doing. I didn't get a chance to watch the practice the very first practice, I was planning on watching the second one, so I didn't really see what teams were working on. Just I don't think David Dragons should be 13th in the model, so I'm probably going to adjust that. He's probably more around that 20th to 23rd in the model, I'm thinking, um, probably where he sits just because. But, I mean, his price, it definitely makes sense to punt him as well. And then Michael McDowell is probably my favorite value play this week, starting 25th, showed top 20 speed. And going back to uh, you know how he's done here in the past, 23rd, 24th, 28th, or sorry, 24th, 31st, 16th, 29th, 12th. So he has shown that top 15 upside, but he looks like a solid tw uh, 15th to 20th place car this week. Um, definitely makes sense, you know, at uh, 5,800, or sorry, uh, 5,600 on DraftKings and only 4,000 on FanDuel. So there's definitely some punts there this week. So you can really load up on the top guys, which I think are going to be the ones that we're going to see at the front of the field, barring any any wrecks or anything like that, just because they've got the best cars, they've got the best equipment. This is a fairly tough um, flat track in that, you know, between the one mile and the half mile track like that. We usually see the top guys at the top. So um, definitely like, I think on FanDuel, you can even get Bush and Harvick together and uh, take two of those punts just because FanDuel really likes to go low with their punts into that 4K range. So definitely a lineup construction that works a little better. Um, on FanDuel, so if you're playing over there, definitely try and get some Bush Harvick lineups because I think they're going to be battling for uh, the win this week. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, definitely hit me up in the DFSR chat room, the Rotor Pros chat room, on Twitter at Jaeger underscore Bombs9. Leave your comment in the comment section below. Make sure to like and subscribe. A lot of videos coming down the line. Really appreciate it. And let's go get some green screens and let's crush it this week.